Hello and welcome everybody. Today, as always, we're going to be talking about cardboard, but not just any cardboard. We're going to be discussing some of the most rare and expensive cardboard out there. Starting off this list, we have some of the most desired lands in the game, those being dual lands. Now, why are these so coveted? Well, it's because they have the broken effect of tapping for two different types of mana. Alert the media! Okay, in all seriousness, it's a pretty boring effect. However, they're the only lands that can really do it without any sort of drawback or restriction, and when you couple that with the fact that there are also some of the only lands to have land types, meaning they can be searched out through fetch lands and other means, you have probably the best lands in this game. However, the real reason these are so valuable is due to Satan. I always get these two mixed up. In 1995, Wizards reprinted a bunch of their older cards, causing the original printings to tank in value. Collectors flipped out, and Wizards knew they had to do something to calm them down. They published a list of 500 cards from Magic's first few sets, and promised they would never be printed again. This is the most controversial decision Wizards has ever made, with players, collectors, and even the developers of the game still debating its merit. But Personally, I'm on the anti-Satan side. So what does all this have to do with dual lands? Well, these are probably the most playable of all the reserve list cards. Every other card on the list is either worse or so broken that it's been banned in basically every format. And all this coupled with the fact that these cards haven't been printed since 1994, well, it's no wonder that some of them can go for well over $10,000. Next up, we have a set of cards that were printed in Alpha that to this day are considered to be not only some of the rarest, but also some of the most powerful cards ever printed. The Power 9. The most expensive card in the group by far is Black Lotus. It is a legend in itself and has been the game's most expensive card since its inception. Today, if you want one, you'll have to spend at least $5,000, and that's for a damaged white border version. If you want anything better, then the price can easily skyrocket to over $100,000. The most expensive magic card ever sold in 2022 for $800,000, and it was a signed artist proof of Black Lotus. Okay, so far we've been taking a look at magic's most expensive cards, but expensive doesn't always mean rare. After all, you can get Black Lotus pretty easily, you just have to have a crap ton of money. But what about the truly rare cards? Cards that you can't find, no matter how much money you have, do any exist? Well, yes, they do, and we're going to take a look at a few of them right now. Test cards are made by Wizards of the Coast for the purpose of playtesting. These are crude mock-ups that are never intended to reach the public. Because of this, those that do reach public hands are considered to be some of the rarest cards out there. But some test cards are definitely rarer than others, and at the top of the ladder has to be the original playtest cards. These were created by Richard Garfield himself, and given to his friends to test the game. Even when you do see these go up for sale, you usually only see the Gamma Run, but that was actually the third round of playtest cards. The second, Beta, was even more rare, but even that has nothing on the first Alpha set of playtest cards. This run consisted of only one 120 card deck, and all alpha cards were hand drawn by Richard Garfield, who still owns them to this day. I can't really even put a price on these. I've seen some gamma cards range from $400 to tens of thousands of dollars in terms of appraisal, but I think it's safe to say that if any cards from the Alpha deck went up for sale, they would blow the value of all other playtest cards out of the water. The year was 1996, and Magic had grown to be one of the largest tabletop games in the world. This was in no small part due to its competitive scene, so for their world championship, Wizards knew they wanted to give the winner something truly special. Enter the 1996 World Champion card. Only one copy was awarded, and afterwards all test copies of it were destroyed along with the printing plate, so it could never be made again. 
It was awarded to Tom Chenfeng, but in 2001 he sold it for $17,500 to an anonymous collector. That might not sound like a lot, but remember, this was over 20 years ago, and at the time, you could get an Alpha Black Lotus for under $600. If it were sold again today, it's estimated to go for over a million dollars, which would make it not only the rarest, but also the most expensive magic card ever. Okay, so there's just a few of the rarest cards in Magic's history, but there's so many more I had to leave out. Let me know in the comments if you guys want to see a part 2 to this video, and hey, let me know if you want me to explore rare cards from any other card games. Till next time, I was AMAC TCG, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!